Hello world, my name is Andy Silvers and today we're going to talk about the new ZBook Fury G9. Alright, so my name is Andy Silvers, I'm an award-winning filmmaker, author, and YouTuber. Uh, if you haven't noticed, I recently crossed the 200 subscriber milestone, so that's really exciting. I'm not going to do a, a quote-unquote celebration in particular, but I am really excited and thank you for all those who have subscribed. Speaking of which, if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed, which statistically speaking is most of you, please consider going down there and subscribing and liking this video. Also, if you want to support the channel, uh, like I said, I am an author, so please check out my books. I literally write books for all ages, from like 3 to 6 years old, they can barely speak, to 8 to 10, or 8 to 12, all the way to teens and adults. Uh, my book for teens and adults uh, is called Solomon Grando vs. the Jupiter Witch. It is now available in hardcover. It's been available for a few weeks now, but I just thought I'd let you know that if you haven't been keeping up with the channel. Uh, and I'm working on a new book uh, right now. I'm in the outlining phase. Uh, I'm not going to talk a lot about that, but it's a contemporary drama. All right, so let's talk about the new HP ZBook Fury 16 G9. Um, so I want to start off by saying that, yes, I'm a little bit late to the game. Um, I had a bunch of things happen in my life recently, uh, like I was sick for an entire week, which is not great. And then there's also a little something extra, a little furry fuzzball that also appeared in my life. Yeah, exactly. But I'm going to cover the new ZBook Fury now. Now that the spec sheet is available, that's the main thing that's important to note is that the official HP spec sheet is now available. So we're going to go through it and I'm going to give you my thoughts and opinions. Uh, all of my thoughts are guaranteed to be 100% correct, so uh, I'm happy to tell you that you won't need to go to any other sources after checking out this video. Uh, JK. So, let's talk about the new ZBook Fury. The first thing to note is it's the Fury 16, which is important because um, in the past several, like four or five, maybe more generations of the ZBook Fury lineup, uh, it wasn't always called the Fury, but uh, in the past several generations, there was always two size options a 15 and a 17, but it would appear that now and potentially for the foreseeable future that will not be the case anymore. And this actually makes a lot of sense that there's only one size option and that it's 16, which is right in the middle between 15 and 17, because HP um, actually haven't put different specs in the different ZBook tiers since the G5, I believe it is, maybe it's the G6. Yeah, I think, I think it's the G6. So the G6 ZBooks... Uh, the 15 and the 17 actually had slightly different specs, if I recall correctly. Um, the 17 could actually handle more, more powerful uh, specs. Uh, but since the G6, if I'm not mistaken, that's not been the case. The actual specs, RAM, uh, storage, I believe the uh, CPU and GPU have been the same. So HP figures, why take all the R&D and research development and cost of supporting uh, two different versions of the same computer where we could just support one? So it makes a lot of sense. So let's talk about the new ZBook Fury. So the G9 is the update over the G8. Uh, what HP does is they update the CPU and GPU every time Intel updates their CPU and GPU. Not always right away, but they always they always do an update. And uh, that that's an important point because Intel is the only CPU company um, they use. They don't use AMD. For the ZBooks, uh, they don't think they ever have. Uh, I hope one day they do, but right now they just they just don't. So this is an update to the specs. But what HP also does is they update the design. So the ZBook Fury design is updated every two generations. So the ZBook Fury 15, let's see here, uh, G7 and G8 were the same design physically, same old laptop, but different specs. Uh, and now finally they've updated both the specs and the laptop and the updates to the laptop itself are rather fascinating because it looks like the updates to the laptop itself actually it looks like they can give it better performance but also not uh, it's a long story uh, that I'll try to get into some in this video 
Uh, suffice it to say, it looks like the fans in the laptop, there's two of them just like before, but they appear to be thicker, which in theory means they should be able to move more air, which in theory means they should be able to cool the laptop better. But if you look at the back of the computer, and HP have released some pictures that show the back of the laptop, you can see there is ventilation back there, but it does not look like there's anywhere near the amount of ventilation that there is in the G7 and G8. So that could be a problem for uh, cooling. Uh, while we're on the subject of cooling, um, I own a Fury G8, and I love it. It's amazing. The fact that the display can go all the way flat is great. The fact that it has tons of vents on the back, kind of like a gaming laptop, is great. It makes me feel a lot better about the product that I'm, that I'm purchasing here, and that it's going to be able to cool uh, the laptop effectively. Uh, something that I apparently discovered, uh, which appears to be an edge case, but I feel like it's worth mentioning, is that some uh, laptop owners uh, say that they use their ZBooks for their work, which isn't surprising. But what they say is that they use it purposefully with the lid closed. So they're using the ZBooks horsepower, but they're not using the display or the keyboard apparently. They're just using it like kind of like a desktop sort of. Um, I've never really heard of anything like that, but there are some people saying that's a thing. And so if that's the case, then in theory the sort of mediocre airflow of the new design could be a problem. However, I don't want to judge HP too harshly right now because no one that I'm aware of owns a ZBook uh, Fury G9 since it's not available. So we will have to see when it comes out if the airflow and uh, thermals are in fact very well kept in check. I assume they will be, uh, but I'm not sure. So we're just going to keep that in mind. Uh, the ZBook Fury G9 employs a vapor chamber just like before. I'm not sure if that vapor chamber applies to all configurations. So, uh, operating systems available are Windows 11 and Windows 10 Pro and Ubuntu Linux. Uh, so all those are perfectly reasonable choices. Uh, if I were buying it, I would buy it with Windows 10 Pro. No question at all whatsoever. I'm not a fan of Windows 11. It's still kind of buggy. I wouldn't trust it. And Linux users will appreciate the Linux option. Alright, as for CPUs, there's a lot of options again. So we have 12th Gen. Intel CPUs, which on average appear to perform well, roughly 10 to 15 percent better than their 11th gen counterparts, so an important increase in performance for sure, but not like you know mind-blowingly significant. And I think one of the reasons for this is because uh, Intel is um, employing a new technology, if you will, which is the uh, efficiency and performance cores, right? E and P cores. Uh, e cores save on power and uh, P cores push the power and push the gigahertz to the maximum. And having a, a mix of these means that the device is never using as much power as it would be if it had, say, eight full on uh, power cores, or performance cores rather, as opposed to four power for efficiency, for instance. So, but the other thing is that the. Um, one of the biggest uh, shifts in Intel's recent technology with regard to CPUs has been the nanometer process. So 11th gen mobile chips, like you would find in the G8, which I own, um, use the 10 nanometer process, which is, was a huge deal for Intel and truly did uh, significantly improve performance for the, uh, the CPU, particularly efficiency, which matters when it's in a teeny little laptop. I mean, the ZBooks are thick, but they're not you know, monstrously thick. Um, but that technology has already been done. Uh, Intel uh, isn't doing like a 7 nanometer process with the 12th gen. It's still the same uh, process with that. It's just that they're employing efficiency and performance cores now, which is a big deal. So the CPUs range from the, uh, let's see here, the Core i5, um, let's see, the 12600HX is an option, uh, all the way up to the maximum i9. 12950HX, and I'm looking through here, I don't see a Xeon option, so that's interesting. Uh, I believe, I would assume that Intel just doesn't make a Xeon, a mobile Xeon CPU with the 12th gen architecture, I would assume, because if so, Intel, or HP rather, would have included it, because it just makes sense. Um, so it looks like there's no more Xeon uh, CPU options, unless I am mistaken. Uh, however, it looks like the Intel's 12th gen CPUs support ECC RAM, 
And in all honesty, that's the main advantage of getting a Xeon CPU any at all, much less in a laptop, is because of its support for error correcting RAM. So it looks like that's going to just be a default that you have error correcting RAM as an option, uh, as supported by the Intel 12th Gen CPU. So the top CPU is a 12950HX. Uh, H, if you know it, Intel's CPU naming convention basically means uh, high performance, literally just stands for high performance. And then X basically means like super high performance. I mean, that basically is what it means. Um, extreme and locked, effectively. So the base frequency appears to be 1.7 gigahertz for the E cores, 2.3 for the P cores, and it goes up to 3.6 gigahertz for the E cores, and 5 gigahertz for the P cores. And it's a little confusing, it's a little irritating, but it is what it is. It says there are eight, let's see, eight P cores and eight E cores, total of 24 threads. So that's 16 cores in a laptop. Technically, that's been done once before that I'm aware of. Not for HP, but another small company. I think it might have been XMG, maybe. But that's a pretty big deal, a pretty big boost in performance. So I am excited to see how the i9-12950HX compares to, say, the 11950H and the Xeon 11995M or whatever from last generation. Uh, so as far as the CPU is concerned, we'll have to see what the performance is. Uh, however, I still feel pretty confident based on seeing 12th gen mobile performance in other laptops, not the Fury, that it will be roughly 10 to 15% better, which means that for a lot of people, just keeping your ZBook G8 is going to be more than good enough. However, if you have a G7, the performance is substantive. It's a huge improvement because Intel, Intel's 10th gen CPUs were really, really scraping the bottom of the barrel for performance. And they used the older 14 nanometer architecture and they were hot. They weren't efficient. It just wasn't a good story all around. As for RAM, uh, I've already touched on it. You have ECC and non-ECC options. Both go up to 128 gigs, DDR5, 4800 megahertz, which is pretty cool. Um, 4800 megahertz is supported through DDR5 and that is supported across the entirety of Intel's sort of higher end mobile uh, CPU options. As for storage, let's see here. It says there are up to four terabytes Gen 4 NVMe SSDs and up to four terabyte Gen 3 NVMe SSDs it looks like. So I believe, this is where I'm going to have to look at the picture pretty closely, but it kind of looks like there are four SSD slots, if I'm not mistaken. It is a little bit hard to tell in this picture. I know there's at least two, no doubt about it, but I'm wondering, I think, I believe there are four. So one thing that's important to note about the new ZBook is that they use a stacked design. So no longer does the keyboard come up and there's RAM and an SSD under the keyboard. It would appear that HP have stacked a bunch of stuff, which actually makes a decent amount of sense. So the RAM is stacked, four RAM slots, of course. That's the only practical way to get to 128 gigs of RAM. Uh, there's four of them. And then the SSDs, if you look closely, it looks like they are stacked as well. So there's two um, slots, and then there's another two slots on top of those two slots. So it looks like... Uh, it will support uh, PCIe Gen 4 SSDs and Gen 3. Makes sense. One thing that's really important to note is that HP have ditched the hard drive slash SSD slot. And what I mean by that is the 2.5 inch form factor slot. Which makes sense because it takes up a lot of space and a lot of professionals just don't want it. Uh, SSDs are insanely fast these days and honestly relatively affordable. So my ZBook G8, Fury G8, does have a, uh, uh, a uh, 2.5 inch slot, meaning that I could put in either an SSD, like one of Samsung's SSDs for instance, or I could put in an actual 7200 RPM or 5400 RPM 2.5 inch spinning drive if I wanted to. Uh, but with the new ZBook you cannot do that. So just be aware of that, but I don't think too, too many people are going to be upset. So how do they get to that number 12 terabytes? Uh, I would assume that it's, let me see here, so 4 times 2 is 8, and then 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So what it seems like maybe is that the bottom two slots 
potentially support double-sided SSDs up to four terabytes each, and then the top two slots support single-sided SSDs up to two terabytes each, which of course four times two is eight plus four more is twelve. So maybe that's maybe that's what it is. Again, I will give you more updates in the future once we have more pictures and more real-world real data about exactly how things are configured. But it would seem to be the case that double-sided SSDs are supported for two slots and not the other two. But again, I will keep you up to date as best I can. As for the displays, they are better than last year because they support a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, finally. I prefer 3 by 2 but it appears the HP is not doing that. Uh, that's one thing that bugs me about the G8 is that it has a very large bottom bezel, which is irritating. Uh, the displays go from a garbage 1080p display with 250 nits of brightness. That's actually the problem. I don't think it's garbage because it's 1080p. I think it's garbage because it's 250 nits. I mean, there are Chromebooks with more brightness than that. And then it goes all the way up to a couple of fancy-pantsy options, including an OLED touch display, which is pretty cool. A 4K plus 3840 by 2400 uh, pixel resolution, 120Hz IPS anti-glare display with apparently 500 nits of peak brightness and HP's Dream Color technology. So I'm expecting it to look amazing. My laptop has Dream Color technology. It has 600-ish nits of peak brightness. So it would seem the brightness went down slightly, uh, but uh, we'll have to keep you up to date on that. Sometimes HP underestimates it. And the final brightness when measured with a colorimeter is like 540 or something, maybe? We'll see. Anyway, it's a great display. I'm really excited to see what that looks like. And I just want to note that there's also a 400-nit 1080p anti-glare display. Uh, I would highly recommend uh, getting that one instead of the baseline display. And regardless of any situation you might be in, because the... Standard 250 nit display truly is that bad. It's just trash in my opinion So uh, graphics graphics cards are really exciting this time because they have cranked it to an 11 You have from the a1000 the RTX a1000 laptop version of course all these are mobile graphics cards not desktop graphics cards Which means they'll cut down a bit in terms of say memory speed bandwidth amount of memory uh, VRAM to be specific, stuff like that. So, the RTX A1000 is new. That was not available before in any in any ZBook ever. The A4500 is new. Wasn't available before. The A5500 is new. And that, and I believe the Radeon Pro 6600M is also new. All those are new, and meaning that they've never been available in a ZBook before, but now they are. The uh, a RTX A3000 was available before. Um... And that GPU has, oh, so this is interesting. So it looks like the new A3000 has a lot more VRAM. It looks like it has 12 gigs of GDDR6 VRAM, which is insane. My ZBook has half that. My ZBook has an A3000 with 6 gigs of VRAM, which is more than enough for what I do. But it looks like they've doubled it, which is substantial. Um... The A4500 is 16 gigs of VRAM. The A5500 is 16 as well. And the A2000 is 8. Wait, does it have 8? Wow, that's more than the A3000 from last year. So like I say, big improvements for the GPUs. So we will have to see how the GPUs perform in real-world tests. The port selection is, is somewhat unchanged from before. I say somewhat because obviously they've updated to the newest standards, like for instance HDMI 2.1 as opposed to 2.0b, and this Mini DisplayPort 2.0, which is a huge improvement. I don't remember exactly what it, it entails, but I believe it's 8K 60, 60 hertz, if I'm not mistaken. It's it's a substantial improvement in terms of the external displays that you can have connected to your ZBook. There's also an RJ45 Ethernet. It doesn't look like it's 2.5 gigabit. Ethernet, which is unfortunate. I think it's just one gigabit. I feel like if it were 2.5, they'd mention that. So that's unfortunate because other competitors do have 2.5 gigabit Ethernet on the laptop. So it is what it is. Headphone microphone combo. Uh, looks like a couple USB Type A's, which is good. Those are very important. Uh, a power connector, a barrel pin, as before. Uh, two Thunderbolt 4 ports. So I believe, 
I'm pretty sure my computer is Thunderbolt 4, so that's not quote-unquote new. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, those are, the, those are the ports. It looks like there is no... Let me double-check. But I don't believe there's a smart card reader. Oh, wait. Nope. I am mistaken. There is a smart card reader. And the last thing is that there is a smart card reader and an SD card slot. A full-size SD card slot, which is great news. Because this laptop should have an F SD card slot if it's uh, tailored for creators. Uh, the laptop has a backlit keyboard and a number path, and it has HP's RGB key uh, keyboard as an option. I don't think that's the standard, but it is an option, which has per key RGB backlighting. Not something that a lot of professionals would want to pay extra for, but it is there. Uh, I should note that HP has, in fact, changed the design of the keyboard a bit. The little nubbin thing, whatever you want to call it, that uh, used to be there in the middle of the G, B, and H keys that I have, is gone. Uh, they basically borrowed that from the Lenovo Think, uh, let's see here, uh, ThinkStation laptops, I believe what's it called. Uh, they basically borrowed it from Lenovo, in other words, and they're gone, which also means that half the buttons on the trackpad are gone. So the old ZBook uh, had six buttons, um, and the new ZBook only has three, which I actually think is a good idea in the long run, because it means that the trackpad will be effectively larger now, because there's more surface area. And, of course, the keyboard deck has a uh, fingerprint reader, which is great for security. The camera is apparently 5 megapixel IR camera. It looks like there's only one camera option, which makes sense. Uh, so this is great news, because that would suggest that the camera is probably, probably 2560 by 1440, which would be great news. I mean, it's such a huge improvement over the garbage webcam that I'm literally filming on right now. Uh, I'm literally filming on the HP ZBook G8's webcam, and it's 720p, and it's not good. And now, the last two things I want to talk about are power. So, I complained extensively about how the ZBooks were basically underpowered compared to some of the competition and compared to gaming laptops. So, the HP Omen 17T from last year had a 330-watt power brick, which is substantial for a laptop. Uh, and the ZBook... G8, which I have, uh, has a 200 watt power brick, which again is a good amount of power, quite frankly. It's just when you consider the amount of like the Core i9 and the you know the A5000 GPU that were available last year was a little underwhelming. But now HP have in increased that amount to a maximum of 230 watt power brick, which is definitely good because that makes it in line with the competition. And I know it's only 30 watts, but when you're talking about a laptop, it's actually more, more important than you'd actually think. That extra 30 watts, that could be the difference between turboing up to 4.8 gigahertz or st staying stuck at 4.5 and things like that. It's just a really big deal, and I'm so happy that HP have improved the maximum power supply. And uh, the weight of the laptop is about 4.8 to somewhere in the 4.5 pound range, depending on if you get a touchscreen. So, pretty heavy, but not different really than last year. It's about the same weight. So, tell me what you think in the comments about the new ZBook Fury uh, 16 G9. Uh, I'm very, very curious to see how it performs. Uh, I'm very curious to see what your thoughts are. And please ask any questions that you have. Again, I will have to do more videos in the future once the device is actually in people's hands. But uh, this is a full spec rundown. And so, I'm happy to finally get this video to you. Uh, I want to note that I really do not like the new design of the ZBook Fury 16 G9. They did kind of what Apple did with the new MacBook Pro. They made it more round, which makes sense, but I don't like it. I'm just letting you know that. But let me know what you think. Do you like the new design, or do you prefer the G8 and G7 design? Uh, let me know in the comments below. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, and, of course, uh, check out my books. All three of them will be available in the link in the video description. Thank you. I'll catch you in the next video.